Hello everyone! Welcome back to this game! As a reminder, we are currently playing the sample game that comes with RPG Maker 1 on the first PlayStation. The game is Gobbly, and it is starring a goblin named Gobbly, whose job it is to get zapped by the heroes and give him experience and that sort of thing. And he has just received a job to do exactly that over here at Common Plain. However, we have a hole in the wall who is following us, and he found out what it's like to be a weakling who has to fight the heroes, and he's actually very interested because it involves having a range of movement. If a hero were to get inside this range, you as a weakling would have to fight them. Meanwhile, Mark the Wall Hole is, well, just a hole in the wall. He has to stay in place all day, and he thinks that's kind of boring, understandably so. So he's wound up convinced, convincing us to leave our post and take him to a soldier who also has no movement options available to him, and yet the soldier takes pride in his work, and Mark wants to know why. Before we do that though, we need to kind of stock up on equipment because, uh, well actually, can we? Do we have enough to afford Mark's weapon here? That would be really handy. We're far off from affording anything from for Gobbly. Well, aside from a woven armor, we could get a woven armor. But more importantly... Hmm... No, not yet. Okay. What I need to do is go into the next location, get into a single battle, and I'll uh, get just enough money to buy Mark another weapon. So that is what I'll do. So, here's our next destination, the Soldier's Home. The Soldier's Home is basically another field. Once again, there's no point in exploring it. You're basically just wanting to go straight up to where the Soldier's Home actually is. In the meantime, let's quickly get rid of these gnomes. Get some money from them. By the way, as far as I'm aware, guarding does not protect you from magic. Apparently, they also got plenty of HP. But you know what? We got a spell too. Gobbly can cast magic. So he's going to go ahead and do that. And in the meantime, do we have any other options? Let's, let's uh, make things a little bit easier for ourselves. Let's try to get one of the gnomes to fall asleep. Because they kind of hurt just a little bit. There, that one's asleep, and that's basically all of Mark's MP. Here, drink some fruit juice, Gobbly. Please don't guard. Oh wait, never mind, doesn't matter. You're dead. I hope these guys get plenty of money, because I need to not only buy Mark's weapon, but also rest at the inn. And he's awake now, which is just as well, because he would have been woken up by us attacking him anyway. Both physical attacks and magic attacks wake people up, by the way. I'm pretty sure. I don't know, maybe I was thrown off by the game I created a little while ago because I was using special attacks, which is a different kind of magic. Hmm. Level up for us, and yeah, that's definitely going to be enough money. In fact, after we're done exploring this place, we might even be able to afford some equipment for Gobbly back in his hometown. Oh yeah. Gobbly learned a new spell. What is it? Falling Star. It's a grip spell for 24 damage. And we only have 14 MP. Like I said, Mark is definitely the mage of the game. Gobbly is learning some spells of his own, but he he's just not going to have the MP to really use them very much. Alright, first things first. Let's rest.
and we should have plenty of money left over for some equipment. At the very least for a new weapon for Mark. Yeah, we can get a war dart. And... That also leaves enough money for a shadow robe. Does he need one? He's got a black robe, defense of 5. The shadow robe would be 10. You know what? Sure. Let's go ahead and buy one of those as well. Now, before I equip his new weapon, I want to go back to this kid over here. I said that this kid's old shield is not really worth buying, and there's a couple of reasons for that. One, it's pretty weak, it's only gonna reduce physical damage by one point. But there's a more important reason that I don't want to bother with any shields. RPG Maker lets you dual wield. Like, straight up, any character can dual wield. Assuming that they're not holding some sort of cursed item, or if you don't turn one of the equipment slots off, yeah, that's totally an option, and it is awesome. I'm gonna do it. It's gonna... It's gonna be awesome. Alright, let me go ahead and... sell off the black robe. Uh, that I was hoping to get a little bit more money out of that. We need an item that restores MP. We haven't bought any of those yet. Oh, you know what? It was in the shop I was just at. Let me go back in there. And buy it. Can only afford one. Might as well buy a couple of berries with the rest of our money then. We'll get plenty of money back uh, as we fight through this field. At the very least. Uh, by the way, it feels so nice to actually just be playing a game again. I mean, don't get me wrong, it was totally worth making a game on camera, showing what it's like to make a game with RPG Maker 1, but oh, that takes a lot of work. Playing a game is a whole lot more relaxing. Alright, let's just make our way towards the soldier. Like I said, there's no there's no treasures to be finding around here, so... Ah, first attack means I could flee guaranteed if I want to. So I will. The experience would be really helpful, but just in case, I want to flee when I have the chance. So hey, these guys look familiar. Except they're called ferrets in this case. Alright, let's fight some ferrets. In fact, since there's so many of them, let's try out this rage spell. Okay, critical hits are becoming a little bit more manageable, thankfully. Nice. And we already got 88 gold from that fight. What else we got here? Oh, plain fairies. Those guys are going to be easy. Well, hey, now's an opportunity to show what it's like to attack with two weapons. Nice. You're dead and you're dead. So, again, dual wielding is awesome. Why would I equip shields when I can do that? Oh, all right. Hey, we got. We're, we're here now. Are you guys a collection agency? I have no money. Do we really look like people from the agency? I guess you guys aren't. What do you want? We come because we heard you worked at the castle. Just like you, we have no range of movement. Well, speak for yourself. So, can you... Shut your fat mouth! What is the point of me talking to you about that? I don't work at the castle anymore. Get out of my sight! I don't want you hanging around here! 
I need to have some range of movement. I don't want to be a character waiting in the same place anymore. But that's my character, I guess. I'm just immovable. I just want to find out why you soldiers take such pride in your work. Then you should ask a soldier who still works. Listen, I already said I don't work at the castle anymore. Got that? Good. Now, get out of my face! Wow, that is a grumpy old man. You should ask a soldier working at the castle. Easier said than done. Gonna tell you right now, the next dungeon is the hardest in the game. So, I'm definitely going to fight a few battles on my way out of here. For example, this one is actually going to be really easy. Well, except for the whole, they get the first strike thing. No, wait, never mind, still easy. How close are we to a level up out of curiosity? Also, how much money do we have? 162. Definitely not enough money for gobbly stuff yet. Unless we got some woven armor. I don't know how much the woven armor is gonna be helpful, but it probably would be better than worn armor. Anyway, we are 15, 23 experience away from a level. Let's at least get a level for both of us before we leave this place. Shouldn't be too difficult. Okay, this time I'm taking advantage of the attack situation. In fact, in one of those fi these fights, I should try out some more spells. I'll do that in the next fight. There's a level already. Cool. More red berries is always helpful. New spell for our mark again. We got confusion. Confuse one enemy, that's not going to be worth using. Because confusion in RPG Maker 1, I've mentioned this before, but this is a new playthrough, so I'll say it again. It sucks. Enemies that are confused could just randomly decide not to be confused and hit you anyway. We also got Berserk, which is 50 damage against all enemies. That That is awesome. We definitely need to try that one. Let's try it against these guys. Overkill? Sure. But that's the reason I'm using it for this fight. Yeah, that's definitely going to be a very useful spell. Expensive? but good in a pinch. Let's also try out another spell. This is a good opportunity for Gobbly's attack all spell, Falling Star. Huh, those guys apparently have a decent amount of HP. By the way, there was no stutter in the stream just then during that spell. It actually does jump cut to lower their attack and that sort of thing. The animation's a little bit broken. What else we got here? Weird Pollen. See what using that spell is like. Because I'll never actually use it for real, let's try Confusion. At least it worked. That's all the gobbly spells. What else we got here? Heal, curry, trance, vaccine, rage, fury. For the most part, we've already tried all of these. Let's just try heal then. It's a group heal, so it'll heal both of us. <sighs> that said, while co Confused may not be a very good status effect, it does sometimes get useful. Three or two. You know what? A couple more battles and we'll actually be able to uh, 
get some, uh, well, first off, we'll get a, a more level up, and more importantly... More importantly, I forget what I was saying. Oh, yeah, we could get some equipment for Gobbly. Get him a second weapon. At this point, we're out of MP. I probably should use uh, one of those blueberries to restore some MP, but I don't think it's necessary. I'm only going to fight one more battle after this, presumably. Yeah, next battle will be another level up, and I will want it. Oh gosh, am I going to want it. Alright, take care of these guys real quick, and moving on. Okay, and by real quick, I mean, uh... Just attack. I would use the auto function, but then Mark would probably use one of those blueberries that I don't want to use. I could turn that off so that he doesn't use that, but... Well, then I might want him to use it again later. No sense turning it off just to turn it back on. At least battles in RPG Maker 1 go pretty quick. You don't need to... The fact that numbers... The, the, the damage. The fact that the damage you cause is actually displayed on the enemy and not in a message window definitely keeps things fast. No new spells this time. Interesting. Alright, so how much money do we get out of all that? 412. Yep, we got enough money for a new weapon at the very least for Gobbly. So I'm gonna get him a new weapon. I think I'm also gonna stay at the inn and in the underworld because it'll be a little bit cheaper. <sighs> the downside, of course, to going back to Gobbly's hometown to get some new equipment is I gotta go through this forest as well as the tower. It's a bit of a trek. At the very least, these guys are no longer a problem. I could probably run away from these guys, but they go down so quickly at this point, I might as well get them. Every little bit of experience and money helps. And hey, we even get berries. Oh yeah, not to mention, one of the enemies here drops that item that allows you to increase your max HP, so if I happen to get one of those, that's even better. It's too bad the song of the area restarts after battle every time. I like it when RPGs continue the song and don't get interrupted by the battle if you know what I mean I don't know why I'm talking to you ah <sighs> there really needed to be a shortcut to get back to the underworld and back up as well this is why I decided to write down what all the stuff here is. Because imagine coming all the way down here thinking you have enough money only for you to find out that you actually don't. That would be annoying. It's unlikely, but I wonder if we've reached a high enough level to get a job class upgrade. That is how it works in this particular game. Once you reach a certain level, you'll be able to upgrade your job class. It's too bad there's no way to find out what that at level actually is. There needed to be an NPC that told you. Okay, so... 
buy us uh, an iron club? Well, you know, writing down the price of these items is definitely a smart move, but it would also help that if you actually wrote down the right amount. I wrote this down as 360 gold when it's actually 260. Well, the good news is this means I can afford an iron club and woven armor. Gonna need that. So, let's see here. Now your dual willing clubs. One is significantly weaker than the other, but hey, hitting twice is still gonna be useful. And get some extra defense, because you'll need it. And while I'm at it, might as well buy some more berries, the blue ones to be specific. Blueberries are nice. I like blueberries, especially in muffins. But I have my limits. I do not like blueberry jelly. The blueberry needs to have plenty of something else mixed in with it or else it's just overwhelming. What about the rest of you? Ever had blueberries? Or how about raspberries? I'm not sure I've ever actually had an actual raspberry. I've had raspberry flavored stuff, but you know that's never actually accurate. Unless it's jelly beans. Jelly beans are surprisingly accurate with their, fi with their flavors. Like I've seriously had popcorn flavored jelly beans and it actually tasted like buttered popcorn. It was astonishing. You guys are cannon fodder. Get out of my way. Manny Radita says, Strawberries are my preferred option. Yeah, mine too, actually. Uh, please don't cause any damage. Strawberry has always been my favorite flavor growing up. And I also like strawberries, actual strawberries. However, I do not like strawberries with sugar on them. I also hate strawberries with chocolate on them. I know that's a delicacy to some people, but it's not to me. Um, yeah, 17 gold. That's not going to be enough to really be useful. So our next destination is right here. The castle. <sighs> like I said, this place right here is going to be the hardest dungeon in the game. And I'm going to be tackling it in the next stream. We're done for today. So what do you think about the game so far, by the way? It's certainly an interesting story. Far, far, far from your traditional save the world story. I'm pretty sure there's no world to save in this game at all. Well, I mean, there is a world, but we don't have to save it. Definitely an interesting story, I think, and it's one of the reasons why I think that out of all the sample games, at least in regards to the console RPG makers, this is the best one, even if the difficulty is a little bit off. Anyway, we're done for today, like I said, so thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next one.